imagine if you could create one algorithm, just one, that could solve any problem, answer any question, and learn anything. A single approach to machine learning that would unlock all the world's knowledge. This isn't science fiction, it's the pursuit of what computer scientists call the master algorithm. The search for this master algorithm represents one of the most fascinating quests in modern science. Not unlike the physicists' search for a grand unified theory, computer scientists are looking for a single algorithmic approach that can extract any knowledge from data, regardless of its nature or source. But what makes this quest so compelling isn't just the technical challenge, it's what it reveals about how we understand learning itself. Think about how you learn to read, to ride a bike, to recognize faces. These seemingly different skills might all be manifestations of a single underlying learning process in your brain. What if we could recreate that process in a machine? Hey guys, just a quick side note. I just launched my merch store. Feel free to check it out. Every purchase directly supports the effort and passion I put into making these videos. Thanks for your support. I really do appreciate it. Now back to the video. The idea traces back to the early days of artificial intelligence. While computers excelled at following explicit instructions, they struggled with tasks that humans perform intuitively, recognizing patterns, making predictions, learning from experience. The field of machine learning emerged to bridge this gap, developing algorithms that improve with experience. But machine learning isn't a monolithic field. It's divided into what Pedro Domingos, who popularized the term master algorithm, calls the five tribes. Each tribe approaches learning from a fundamentally different perspective, and each believes their approach might be the path to the master algorithm. The symbolists view learning as inverse deduction. They build algorithms that manipulate symbols according to logical rules, much like how mathematicians prove theorems. Their algorithms create rules from examples. If you see enough swans and they're all white, you might formulate the rule all swans are white. This approach excels at explaining its reasoning but struggles with messy real world data. Imagine if you were learning to play chess solely by memorizing rules. If the opponent moves this pawn, I should move that knight. You'd have a clear explanation for every move, but you might miss the intuitive strategies that experienced players develop. The connectionists, by contrast, draw inspiration from the brain. Their neural networks consist of interconnected nodes that strengthen or weaken their connections based on experience. Not unlike how neurons form stronger pathways in your brain when you practice a skill. These algorithms have revolutionized fields like computer vision and natural language processing, but their inner workings often remain mysterious black boxes. This is more like learning chess by playing thousands of games. You develop an intuitive sense for good moves without necessarily being able to articulate why they work. The evolutionaries take cues from Darwin's theory. Their genetic algorithms mimic natural selection, generating populations of possible solutions and allowing the fittest to survive and reproduce. This approach excels at optimization problems where the goal is clear, but the path isn't. Think of this as a learning chess by watching many different strategies compete against each other, then adopting elements of the winning approaches. The Bayesians frame learning as a form of probabilistic inference. Their algorithms update beliefs based on evidence, calculating how likely different hypotheses are given the data. This systematic approach to uncertainty shines in areas where your data is limited or noisy. This resembles a chess player who thinks, given my opponent's past games and current board position, what's the probability they'll attack my queen next? Finally, the analogizers learn by recognizing similarities. Their algorithms find patterns in one domain and apply them to another, much like how you might understand a new concept by relating it to something familiar. This approach powers recommendation systems and case-based reasoning. This is like learning chess by studying similar board positions from past games and adapting those strategies to your current situation. Each tribe has scored impressive victories. Neural networks power the image recognition in your phone's camera. Genetic algorithms design efficient airplane wings. 
Bayesian methods help diagnose diseases, yet none alone seem sufficient to create truly general learning. What would a master algorithm look like? Perhaps it would integrate the strengths of all five approaches, the logical clarity of symbolists, the pattern recognition of connectionists, the creative exploration of evolutionaries, the principled uncertainty of Bayesians, and the flexible comparisons of analogizers. Such an algorithm could transform how we approach knowledge itself. Rather than programming computers explicitly, we could simply provide data and questions. The implications would be profound. Consider healthcare. A master algorithm could analyze patterns across billions of medical records, genetic sequences, and research papers, identifying disease mechanisms that have eluded human researchers. It could personalize treatments based on your unique biology and history, potentially saving millions of lives. Or think about scientific discovery. The algorithm could sift through astronomical data to find patterns invisible to human observers, or simulate countless molecular interactions to discover new materials and medicines. It might even help address climate change by optimizing energy systems and discovering new sustainable technologies. Education could be revolutionized too. Imagine learning systems that adapt perfectly to each student's unique strengths, weaknesses, and interests, not just adjusting the pace, but transforming the entire approach to match how each person learns best. But this power raises profound questions. If a master algorithm makes discoveries that humans can't understand, how do we validate them? If it drives crucial decisions in healthcare, finance, and governance, how do we ensure fairness? If it learns from human-generated data, might it amplify our biases rather than transcend them? And there's a deeper philosophical question. What would a master algorithm tell us about the nature of knowledge itself? Is all knowledge ultimately reducible to patterns and data? Or are some forms of understanding, consciousness, ethics, aesthetics fundamentally different? The quest for the master algorithm also forces us to confront what makes human intelligence unique. If machines can learn anything we can, what remains distinctly human? Perhaps our ability to determine what questions are worth asking in the first place, or to assign meaning and value to what we learn. Some skeptics doubt a true master algorithm is possible. They argue that no single approach can handle the diversity of learning problems we face. Perhaps different domains require fundamentally different approaches. No universal solution exists. Others suggest the master algorithm might be discoverable, but incomprehensible to humans, much like how a cat can't understand calculus. Our brains might be incapable of grasping the ultimate principles of learning, yet the search continues, driven by both practical applications and fundamental curiosity. Each breakthrough in machine learning, whether it's a language model that writes poetry or an algorithm that predicts protein structures, brings us closer to understanding what a master algorithm might look like. What fascinates me about this quest is how it blurs the boundaries between computer science, cognitive science, philosophy, and even spirituality. It's a technical problem with profound implications for how we understand ourselves.